Hi there guys, welcome to another episode. This week's episode, we're opening another box, and it's from the people at Motorsport Electronics here in the UK. Uh, and we're going to be opening their brand new Gen X ignition system. So, um, yeah, let's get on with it, shall we? So this is the Generation X Ignition Kit, which is the replacement for the Nodis Pro, um, supplied by the guys at Motorsport Electronics in the UK. Um, this is the brand new kit, and we're going to start having a look inside the box. So, let's open this box and see what's inside of it. And inside this box, well there's, well, there's two more boxes. So let's have a look what's inside them instead. Right, so I've got basically two boxes here. One of them is marked ZTEC. And inside that box, we have the Generation X itself in its nice little spacey bag here. And in the other box, we've got all the rest of the parts. So we've got wiring harness. We've got a set of extra pins. We've got a complete guide here, which is the basic quick start setup guide. We get a nice Nodis Pro sticker that's going on the car and some sweets. Right, we're gonna start off in the nice spacey silver package here, and it's nicely glued down and sealed, but inside here, we've got the actual box. Right, so we'll take a look at the box itself. Uh, as you can see, the box itself is still metal. It is slightly bigger than the old box, but at the same time, you do actually get somewhere to screw the box down which didn't come with the old one so it's a really really integrated box uh, on the end of the box we've got one connector and we've got one light so there's no buttons on this anymore which makes this box completely waterproof we can see that it's already sealed inside here so we can pretty much fit this box anywhere and it will survive the contact on this box is now a three row contact making it Slightly more bulky this way, but a lot less compact this way. Um, so it's a really professional looking contact. It's also completely sealed in there. Again, making this box that bit more waterproof. The wiring and loom itself has one main contact. Inside there, you can possibly see the rubber in there, which when you connect it to the connector on the box, makes this fully waterproof connector. As you can see, the connector here has a little slidey locking tab on the side of it. So when you connect the contact to the box itself, you have to press this in, and as you'll see, it pulls the contact in, making a nice waterproof solid connection in there. So we can't get any water in there. The back of the socket here is also waterproofed, um, and the holes that don't have any wires in are also waterproof. So this is a completely waterproof system. We're not gonna have any problems getting water ingression in there and getting problems with earths and things like that. To undo it, you basically pull here and push at the other end. So the socket will come off as one unit. So it's a really, really, really nice system. Uh, moving along the wiring loom, we get to the little tiny short cable, which is a standard serial contact. So you can plug this straight into your PC and run it through there. You probably might want to get a, an extension cable because it's a really short cable, but it's there anyway. Moving along from there, we come to the next cables. Uh, these are, as all the other cables are, really, really nicely labeled up. Um, so we've got the black one here labeled up as ground. So that's basically the earth, we've got one earth cable. We have a brown wire for taking off for the tachometer. So if you wanna see the revs, we can take that cable off of there. That's pre-installed. And then we have the two ignition feeds. We've got one that will feed the coil and we've got one that feeds the actual Generation X box itself. So to get this up and running, we only really need to connect those two to plus and those two to minus on the battery. And basically that's the system wired in. We don't really need to do anything else to get this up and running. Moving along from there at the other end, we have two cables. We have the one for the crank sensor, nicely labeled up there quite clearly. So you can see that that is definitely for a crank sensor. You can't mix it up with anything else. 
And on the other end, we've got coil, which is the oval connector. So it will fit most coil packs from a ZTEC engine and even the Duratec engine. So it's a really, really versatile connection, this one is. There are different wiring looms available. As I'm using the ZTEC system, I've obviously got the ZTEC connectors on here, ready to go. So I need to plug that into my coil pack and I plug that one into my crank sensor. I've then got 12 volt plus and a minus on there and that's it. That is really all I need to do to fit it. Fitting that will give me straight away a 2D system for when I'm starting to map the system, trying to work out all the parameters, trying to get everything sorted out. To get a little bit more in depth, we're gonna need another sensor above the coil and the crank sensor, and that is either a map sensor or a throttle position sensor. These aren't fitted to this. The old system, they were pre-fitted with three cables that came out of here. What they've done instead is they've sent connectors here. So there's a little bag full of connectors here so I can build out the system. It does actually come in the book a set of instructions. Now it's based on the connector going that way. So we've got A1 here, A8 here. So we'll have A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A7, also an A8, and then it's B1 to B8, C1 to C8. So it's really, really simple, really, really easy diagram to follow. So if we want to look at these cables, um, and as I said earlier, this doesn't have a throttle position sensor on it, but we do have the references for it here. So if we want to wire in the throttle position sensor, which uh, we need to do to get this 3D mapped, we need to run a cable here from A6, which is the sensor ground. We need to run from A7, which is the TPMS sensor. This is the five volt sensor that comes out of the box. And then we've also got C3, which is the pink cable. So looking at this connector, we can then work out which one of these pins we need to fit. And there's obviously, like I said, there's a bag full of pins here. So we can fit the extra cables to the back of this connector. Um, and it gives us all the instructions here. If you want to add extra sensors, you just need to look in this table here and you can work out what sensor do I need to put. So if I want to add an air temperature sensor, for example, I'll know here from that book that A2, which is that pin there, gives me the inlet air temperature sensor. So that is where I need to take a cable out for that one. So it's really easy for me to fit these extra pins, add some extra cables, and I can take out all these features myself. Really, really easy. In the book itself, it will actually tell you what cables do what. So this is the basic wiring diagram for this wiring harness that I've got here. And it's telling me the cables that I've got. So I've got the Ford three wire coil pack. I've got 12 volt ignition feed, as I said earlier, I've got an earth feed and I've got the crack sensor. So that is basically the only thing I need for the car to get started. Um, what I find really interesting in this is that they've given us the wiring diagrams for everything. So if I want to know what the three pins for the coil pack on the Ford do, it's giving me a wiring diagram in here. So it's really, really useful to go in here. If you're gonna try and uh, fault find later on in the system, I've got some really, really useful information here that I can go in and I can work out what should I have on each one of those wires rather than me just guessing. So I really do like this. So we've got the coil pack there. We've got the, obviously the, the uh, TPS sensor here, the throttle position sensor we've got here, we've got the cables and they're telling us five volt reference, TPS signal and a sensor ground. So it's telling me what three cables I need. All I need to do then is go back to the wiring chart and I can look, I need a five volt reference, a signal and the sensor ground and I can choose them from this list. And I just put the, the little sensors in the wires where I need to. So really, really useful system. Right, so that's just a quick look at the Generation X kit and what comes in the boxes. Um, I'm looking forward to being able to fit this to the Fiesta, plugging it all into the ZTEC, wiring it into the car, and then starting the engine. Um, it's gonna be interesting to plug it all into the computer and start mapping the engine and setting it up properly. Um, obviously, I'll be filming that and I'll bring you guys along with me. So, if you like what you've seen so far and you wanna see me plugging this in, you wanna see me testing it all, getting it working, make sure you press that subscribe button um, and I'll see you in a future video. Thanks a lot and bye-bye.